Super Auto Pets is so stupid, but I just can't stop playing. When I was young and dumb, I used to play a game called TFT. And that got me thinking, uh, I'm mad. I really enjoy this game. And that got me thinking, man, if only there was a game like TFT that just didn't suck balls. Now, I don't know if this game is just a plant by Android, considering its main mascot is just the default turtle emoji on all Android devices. But I don't really care, because I have Android, and all those Apple people can now cry in their abyss because they can't play Super Auto Pets on their phones, and they can't play it on the toilet like we can. Super Auto Pets is a silly little auto battler about silly little pets that you acquire with silly little golden coins that you receive every single round, and you will try to get 10 silly little trophies before your 10 silly little hearts run out. This game also offers $5 paid DLC for a pack that's virtually the exact same with a few extra pets added. Of course, it's a waste of money, and uh, I already bought it. Look, it even has your favorite animals like dog, puppy, bacteria. Not but for real though, I don't think I've ever used the bacteria and I don't intend to. Every pet has a cool, unique power. Except for maybe like one third of all the pets because they're basically worthless. Also, in one of the pictures on the Steam page for Super Auto Pets, there's an avocado shown in the shop, and I don't think I've ever seen an avocado, so I don't know if that's fake marketing or... Also, if you're anyone who uses any of the summoner pets alongside a whale, I, I you should just uninstall the game. Unlike what some streamers want you to think, like Northern Line and Lodewick, the game's actually incredibly easy. In my 40-some hours I've played them, I think I've only lost, like, never? That's why all my guys are wearing top hats right now. They're all classing upon all the opponents. There's also this super rare sloth pet that is does absolutely nothing, but for some reason people love to grab it. I've only seen it twice come up in my shop in my 40 some hours gameplay, and whenever I do, I always make sure to grab it. But it doesn't matter because you lose immediately after, unless you're me, of course, because I have a 100% win rate on this game. My favorite pet in Super Auto Pets would have to be the ant. It can spawn in on round one, so I love to pick that up whenever it first appears. But this must be some kind of mutant ant, because apparently it's about around the same size of a gorilla, so I don't know what's happening there. When the ant dies, it gives a random buff to someone later else in your line. If you get like three ants, you can just have them all funneling buffs to one person, or you can all combine them and you have a pretty strong unit that also, when dies, gives a buff to one of your other units. Of course, Ludwig is clinically insane, which is why he uses stuff like the chick that spawns after the rooster dies, and a single honeybee. But I don't know, because I could totally beat him in a 1v1 in Super Auto Pet, so I don't even know why I'd bother even bringing up someone like that. The only issue I have is that the second pack, I think, is pretty lame. Like, all the pets that add are just, like, these scalar pets that just add bonus health and attack on them for stupid reasons. Which is not nearly as fun as when you actually find synergies between pets with abilities that kind of work together. Such as what I mentioned before with the whale and the summoner. Some people like to put a deer beside a whale, and then what happens is at the start of the round, the whale then eats the deer. But then when the deer dies, it spawns a 5-5 five, five truck. And then once you get rid of the truck and you kill the whale, then the whale spawns another deer, which then when killed, also spawns a second truck. When I told my friend that I started playing Super Auto Pets, the only thing he knew about the game was the turtle. And so he was really praying that the turtle would be some OP pet in the game. But <laughs> it's virtually worthless. What makes Super Pet amazing is because I don't even have to play the game for it to play for me. Because you can just hit autoplay at the start and then bam, the entire game just happens and you just get to watch for 40 hours. I don't know why when I place any pet in this game it makes a sound bite of the pet, but then you place a giraffe and it's just some woman saying giraffe. Now, I don't know if they chose to do that because giraffes in real life are actually mute, if you didn't know. I, <laughs> I would know, I'm a sea marine biologist. But uh, our, I don't know if they picked it that way or because they're from Norwegia and... Wait, am I, am I pressing that right? Oh, sorry, Denmarkia, in which there's no such thing as giraffes there, so they probably have never seen a giraffe before in their life. There's also a pill, which is absolutely horrific, because you can give it to the animals to make them faint. Uh, and I don't know how I feel about that, because them fainting just means they die and they never come back. There's also a snail, but <laughs> I mean, I, I've never seen what the snail does, of course. I've never lost a single life, of course, so I don't know. <laughs> to me, the snail is just a random 2-2 creature. It doesn't do anything. So I might as well explain how the game works. At the beginning of every turn, you get 10 gold coins. Buying a pet costs 3 gold coins. Buying anything from the shop also costs 3 gold coins. You can also choose to re-roll both the shop and the pets available for a total of 1 coin, meaning that every turn you can buy 3 things and re-roll once. You only have 5 spots available for pets, but if you combine 2 pets of the same type, then they can combine and level up. And a lot of pets get new abilities as they level up, or some don't because they suck.
For example, there's the elephant, which does actually gain ability when it levels up, but I think the ability gets even worse every time you level it up. Same with the hatchling, so never bother leveling up these two. In fact, never bother picking up either of those two. And now you can trust me with this, because of course, I've never lost a game. Garlic armor is probably my favorite item in the game. You can put it on and just make your dudes take less damage. Actually, no, take that back, because garlic sucks, and everyone likes chocolate, and chocolate is the best item. Giving it to a pet just increases its XP by one, meaning you can just level up. That means when you get later to the game, you just reroll the shop until you get a ton of chocolates, and until you get level three everyone. Oh yeah, also the turtle, when it dies, it gives melon armor another item to the pet behind it. So I think that's relevant here, because I'm talking about items. Now here's a little, uh, here's a little pro tip that uh, Joe Biden's America doesn't want you to know. If you give a honeybee on the last pet in your row, if you ever trade at the end, then you will actually spawn a little honeybee, meaning your trade will become a victory for you. And if you want to go even further and know something that even Jill Biden doesn't want you to know, is that if you then put a porcupine, is that what Knuckles is? I don't know, put it at the end and it rains hell and death upon everyone in the game when it dies. But if you put it at the end, it'll be your last pet, meaning it would only affect any pets the other team has. And if you put a honeybee on that, you can basically just have a whole kamikaze pet. At the beginning of every game, you also get to choose a team name where you get to pick from six prompts and you can pick two of them to make some wacky team name like ad-libs. The general meta for that is if you see the word submissive, or wet, or hard, you gotta pick those. Of course, this game is incredibly luck-based on who you go up against, because sometimes you can come across the stupidest teams in the world and get free wins, or you can be on turn two and come across some sweat who's doing the absolute min-max meta in sweeping. There is also another mode where you do only go against people in one lobby, like a rotating lobby, kind of like how TFT works, but I don't like to mention that game. But that's less fun in my opinion, and you don't really get the trophies which you use to buy the cool hats, like my guys, all dripped out. In fact, I'm wearing the cheapest hat right now, and you may think that's because I suck at the game, but no. Of course, I have a 100% win rate, 40 hours, I, I have everything in the game. I have stuff that the devs even haven't added to the game yet. I've... <clears throat> uh, I just like to style on people by making them pretend I'm poor. You know what they say, you gotta act poor to stay rich. And I'm only one of those things. Alright, yeah, no, go download the game on Steam, it's free. Go download the game on your Android devices if you have an Apple device. Go look yourself in the mirror and regret your choices. Uh, buy the $5 pack to support the game devs and then never play the pack because it's just inferior to the main pack unless you want free wins, in which case use the main pack, or sorry, use the DLC pack and then go into your settings and enable cross-pack compatibility. Uh, I'm, it's too late for me to bother really taking that audio bite and this one too. So just, just go play the game. Well, I hope you enjoyed Scott Talks About Game Commercials. To pay, please send a check through one of the following methods. If you cannot send a single check, a checkbook will do. What will I do with all the money? That's tough to say. I think I might buy out the economy. <laughs> you can do stuff like that. Technically speaking, IBM owns the weather.